follow you. Okay. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Christ is my firm foundation. The Faithful through 
Good morning. morning. Wonderful to have each of you here as we join together to worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, Everything you need to know will be projected for you, us here behind uh, behind me here on the wall. Our praise team will be leading us in song. We're continuing our teaching series of 30 days of prayer. And we have a special message for our children. I think that's it. So I pray that God bless each of you as you worship him this day. I invite you to stand now. So we begin our service singing, Holy Spirit.
And so we pray that we are overcome by the presence of our Lord this day as we begin our worship of Him in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our confession. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands towards your most holy sanctuary. I invite you now, friends, to join me as we take a few moments of silence to go before our Lord, confessing to him all those sins we know and those sins we don't know. Now together we cry out to our Lord, Father of mercy, we confess that we are not the people you created us to be. We confess that we are by nature sinners and in rebellion against your will. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the things we have done wrong and the good we have failed to do. We have sinned against each other and broken the bonds of fellowship. Forgive us of our sins, remove the evil from our hearts and minds, and teach us to follow you with willing hearts. Now friends, through the mercy of God in Christ Jesus, our Savior, you have been made the children of God and received his mercy. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce God's grace to you. And the stead and by the command of our, my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated for our scripture readings. The first reading for today is taken from Hebrews 11, starting at the 8th verse. By, Abraham, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And when he went out, not knowing where he was going, by faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand in the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and ex exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading for today is from Galatians 3, starting at the 27th verse. For as many of you as are, let's start over again. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you all, for you all, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's then you are Abraham's offspring, 
heirs according to promise. This is the word of the Lord. I'd like to invite our children up front for our children's message. Thanks for coming up, friends. How are you today? Good. Good. I want to play a little guessing game with you. I have something in this bag. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to try and guess what it is. I'm going to shake it up a little bit here. What do you think is in this bag? Do you think it's a puppy dog? No. How about a pencil? How about a flower? Any guesses? Any guesses whatsoever? Like a pl- something plastic? Okay, good, good. Any others? Pencils? Okay. What if I told you that it was a cookie in here? Now, what do you think about that? you like... Okay. How could you be sure that you knew that there was a cookie in here? What's that? It could open up the bag, couldn't it? Well, let's go ahead and open up the bag. Man. Okay. Look at that. There's a cookie. Now, how do I know that this is a cookie? Because you could eat it, right? You could see it. You can see it looks like a cookie, right? You can, you can smell it. It smells like a cookie. You could taste it, right? Lots of different ways. But what if I told you that I couldn't take this cookie out of the bag? How would you know that it's a cookie? You would... You, could, yeah, you, you couldn't see it. You would just have to, you would have to trust me, right? Trust what, that what I said is, is true about the, uh, what is true about the cookie. You know, the Bible talks about faith. And the Bible says that faith is, is being sure of what we hope for, of even things that we cannot see. So, for example, can I see the face of God like I see Jordan's face right there? Not necessarily the same way, but I can see evidence of God all around, right? What are some evidences of God that are all around us? We can see the beautiful sunrise in the morning, right? We can see the trees outside. We can see all of these wonderful things. Let me ask you this. To have faith to believe in God, where might we get that? Where might we get that faith to believe in God? give you a hint. I put it right in the back of the church. Yeah. In our baptism, right? In our baptism, when, when Pastor Scott or a pastor or a person puts the waters over you with God's word and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we know that God plants the seed of faith inside of us. The seed of faith to believe and trust that he is good. To, to know that he is good. Now, speaking of knowing people, you guys have probably gotten to know a lot of people over the last couple of like weeks because school started, right? So if you saw a friend or if, if you saw someone new in school, how would you get to know them better? Ask them, what, what's your name? That's a great start, yeah. Talk to them. Any others? Spend time with them, maybe out at recess. Maybe sit with them at lunch. Maybe have them come over for a play date, right? Spending lots of time with them. In the same way, we get to know God better when we spend time 
in his word, right? Whenever we read his word, whenever we hear when his word is read, read to us, we get to know him better. We get to know that he is worthy of our trust, right? Like I kind of asked you to trust me that there was a cookie inside this bag. We get to know him better and know that he is worthy of our trust because what did he do for us that is so wonderful and amazing? He died on the cross for us, right? Died on the cross so that we might have forgiveness for all of our sins and we might live with him forever in heaven. That's a pretty awesome God, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Let's go ahead and thank God for, uh, for, for giving us the gift of faith in our baptism and being able to grow in his word. All right? Congregation, we ask you to, to join us in this prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Help me to know you more, to spend time in your word, to see your love, and share that love with everyone I know. Amen. Thanks for coming up, friends. We'll see you next time. As the kids head back, invite you to stand and join our praise team in the singing of our next song. Yet not I, but through Christ in me.
Heavenly Father, it's only through you and your love for us that we can make it through any day. We pray that you continue to send your Holy Spirit into the depths of our hearts so that we may continue to know and grow in this truth. Yet not I, but through you, Jesus Christ, in me. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat, friends. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here, and, and I don't want to tell you it's a surprise that I'm here. Because my sophomore year of college was rough. It was the hardest year of my life. Why? Well, there, there was lots of reasons, but the biggest reason was is that it was the time of my life where I was the farthest away from God. He never left me. But I sure did not want to have to do anything with him. You see, I was big stuff, at least in my own head. I was big stuff. I was a sophomore. I was living with upperclassmen. I was playing college soccer. I had lots of friends. And I just really thought a lot about me. The things of this world, they were amazing. They enticed me. And they entrapped me. Time after time, the darkness sucked me in. And it never seemed to want to let me go. So stuck in the darkness, it got to the point in my life that that light seemed so far away from me. I, I knew that Jesus loved me. I, I knew that Jesus forgave me and he died for me. I was taught that. My parents brought me to church. They brought me to Sunday school. They brought me to confirmation. And I believed it. But at that time, I didn't know it. I, I believed it, but I, I, I didn't know it. I, I really started to think, how? How can Jesus love someone like me? Now, the first part of that school year, 1999, sophomore year, no problem. But after the soccer season ended, when I had more time on my hands, Satan really stepped it up. He stepped up his game, and he attacked. But you know Satan, right? He's a liar. He, he really is. But he did a good job at making me question everything. He was working to get me to believe that there was no way, there was no way that Jesus could love me. There was no way that Jesus could forgive me. So I might as well give up. And just keep focusing in on me, myself, and, and I. Because I could fix it. I could take care of what was wrong with me. But I couldn't. So I sunk deeper into this darkness into this pit of despair. The semester ended and I went home over Christmas break and you know what I did? I went through the motions. I went through the motions of going to church with my family. But it didn't mean much. The darkness covered up the light I, I once knew and I began to question more and more my faith. I wonder, did Jesus really die for me? And that thought stuck. Just pushed deeper into my heart, 
and my mind. And after surviving Y2K, I made it back for that <laughs> spring semester of my sophomore year. And it was about mid-February, and the Saturday afternoon, and I was trying to do homework, and there was a knock at my door. I opened it, and my, my friend walked in. She looked at me, and she said that, that her and some people were going to go to Jehovah tomorrow for the late service. And I said, cool. Thanks, but no thanks. She didn't say much, but she said that she would be praying for me. Early the next week, she, she checked in on me. You see, she knew me well. Her dad had been my pastor. We had been friends since second grade. So she could tell, she could see that something wasn't right. She could see it. She knew that I was struggling. She knew that I was questioning. A couple weeks passed. And things were still the same. My friend would check in on me and remind me that she was praying. She would take the time to chat if I wanted to. She never pushed anything. She would always listen. She would always remind me of who I was, of where my identity came from. But I still didn't want to leave. She invited me again to join her at Jehovah. Again, I said, no thanks. Again, she said she would keep praying for me. Finally, another Saturday afternoon, another knock on the door. She said, hey, I'm going to go to Jehovah tomorrow. I want you to come with me. Afterwards, I will take you to Embers. <laughs> this time, I went. I, I went, and it was exactly what I needed. It was that exactly what I was missing. You see, I was missing the gospel. I was missing out on how God saw me. I was missing out on what he had rescued me from. I was missing out on who he was because I was concerned with, so concerned with who I was. My friend knew what I needed to hear. So she prayed and she believed. And that Sunday of my sophomore year, the Holy Spirit worked. I heard once again that Jesus died for me, but I heard it personally. Not just for me, like collective me, but I heard that Jesus Christ died for me, and I believed it. I was reminded that my identity did not rest in what I did or who I thought I was, or who others thought I was to be. I remembered that my identity is in Christ. Like so many, I drank the Kool-Aid. I believed what the world was saying. I believed that my worth was in me and what I was doing or not doing. My friend, though, by the grace of God, she knew, by faith in Jesus, she knew what the Holy Spirit could do and would do in me. My loving and persistent friend prayed and knew exactly that I needed Jesus, to hear of his love for me, to be told that forgiveness is mine from him. But before finally being willing to hear those amazing things, not only did my friend pray, she showed me Jesus. 
She didn't push him down me. She showed me Jesus. And those two things together made all the difference in the world. Friends, you guys know this life is hard. It is filled with darkness. Darkness that extends to all ages, to all homes. No one can avoid it. It's so easy today to drink the Kool-Aid and believe that there is no hope. The world wants you and I to believe that they have all the answers. That they know what is best. They want you to think, and so they tell you over and over and over again that you can handle it yourself. And I can tell you this, Satan loves what is going on. He absolutely loves it. He wants you to believe like I did. So what do we need to do? We need to be in prayer. Yes? yes. We, we need to be in prayer for our kids, our grandkids, our nieces, our nephews. We need to be praying for students on campuses near and far, from the elementary school all the way to the grad school. Everyone is susceptible to trust in themselves, to believe that they can truly do it on their own. Every one of us is susceptible to getting stuck in the darkness and believing the lies of the world that there is no hope for them. So we need to be praying that someone, a friend, an RA, a teacher, a classmate, that someone around these people that we know is willing to listen, to care, to share the love of Jesus. Because Satan is a liar and he wants us all to think that there is no hope. But we know what God knows. We know that God wants all of them. He wants all of them just like us to know the truth. And what is truth, right? In our world today, what is truth? Truth is God's gift given to us. Truth is God's gift of his son. That's the truth. And that's the only truth in a world filled with lies. That's the light that breaks through the darkness. And it truly is for everyone. Look at Galatians chapter 3. When you look at what Paul wrote here, Galatians chapter 3, you see that this gift, this truth is truly for all people. It's not based on anything that anyone does or doesn't do. It's not based on who you are or who you think you are to be. It's not based on a job or anything like that. Look what Paul writes here, beginning in chapter 3, verse 26. He says this, For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized in the Christ have put on Christ. So let's just get a few words in and stop. In Christ Jesus. Not in you. Not in me. Not in any pastor. Not in the government. Not in society. Not in what others think, not in your past, not in your present. No, it says here that in Christ Jesus, you are sons and daughters of God. In Christ Jesus, 
You are sons and daughters of God. How? By faith. By faith in Christ Jesus, you are justified. You are identified as not guilty before God. By faith created by the Holy Spirit in you. You, my friends, are sons and daughters of the King. And those who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So through this holy baptism, God incorporates believers into union with Christ, right? Matthew 28, 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations doing what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So through holy baptism, God incorporates believers into union with Christ. This righteousness of Christ becomes yours. It becomes mine. It becomes ours. That is, Jesus' holy status is given to you. His holy status is given to you. Credit it to your account through his death and resurrection. Why? So that you may live. And that you here is an all y'all you. He continues in verse 28. Look what he says. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you all are one in Christ Jesus. Do you see those words of truth from God? You know what these words of truth from God say? They say that ethnic, social, and sexual identities do not determine one's standing before God. All who believe, all who believe and are baptized, all you all are one in Christ Jesus. All you all are part of the body of Christ. So yes, this means exactly what it says, that all of us who believe, we are one in Christ Jesus. And so, verse 29 continues on. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So, through God, through Christ, God fulfills this promise that he gave to Abraham. The promise that is ours. From God, through Christ, right to you and me. Friends, these words pack so much truth. These words wield a powerful and awesome message. A message that my friend Melissa prayed that I would believe again. A message that we are praying for strength to share with others. A message that we are here to carry forth into the neighborhoods of work, of school, of home, of skating rinks, of ice rinks, of basketball courts, lacrosse fields, football fields, wherever it may be. A message that we together as brothers and sisters in Christ can join in sharing. And yeah, we're not going to change any hearts. We're not. The Holy Spirit's going to take care of that. But you know what? As the Holy Spirit does that, we will be there as hearts are changed. Like my friend Melissa. She was there as my heart was changed. We will be there when people remember by faith what Jesus has done for them. We will be there when people, by faith, come to this saving faith in Jesus as they learn for the very first time that Jesus Christ died for them and that he is the Savior of the world. 
And you know what? We may even be there then as these same people are brought to the waters of holy baptism. For friends, those people around us, those people across the campuses worldwide, those people in our neighborhoods and our areas, these are all people who are children of God. They need to hear the truth. They need to know, too, that they are loved. And this means, yes, first off, we pray for them. We pray for them. And part of that prayer was we could pray that God sends someone to them. Their Melissa. We pray that God sends us to go to them. Yes, this means even those who don't look like us. Or think like us. Or act like us. Or who don't even like us. For this gift of faith is for all. Hear these words. Let them speak to you as you need today. Let them settle your heart. Let them work in you. For no matter who you are, no matter where you have come from, no matter what you have been through, You're welcome here. You're welcome at the foot of the cross. You are welcome in the Savior's grasp. For he has redeemed you. And he has given you the promises of all promises. You are heirs of his never-ending love. Would you please stand and join me? Father, we pray to you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for making me an heir of your kingdom. As students, faculty, and staff walk onto campuses near and far this week, let those who have put on Christ carry the message of the gospel to those who have forgotten or to those who do not know your love in Jesus. Let their words and actions proclaim that no one, absolutely no one, is excluded from the love that held your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to the cross. As they go forth in your resurrection power, may they trust that you are taking care of them and have a purpose for their life. And may we too remember that as well, as we walk in the path that you have for us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts, our minds focused on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join me now, friends, as we make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. As we turn to our Lord in the time of prayer, I brought this up last week. For those of you who are with us, you will remember this. Um, Those of you who weren't, um, we're doing things a little bit differently as we're going to our Lord through 30 days of prayer. If we go to the next screen, if we go to the next screen, there we go. There are some prayer ideas. What we're going to do is I'm going to pray a little bit, and then I'm going to go silent um, and allow you to pray as the Holy Spirit leads. Um, Yes, that may mean there's some awkward silence. Um, um, If you are feeling led to pray... Pray. If you're not, that's okay. Just silently keep going to our Lord in a prayer, and then we'll get to our Lord's prayer. I invite you guys to join with me now as we go to our Lord in prayer. Almighty God, 
Most gracious Father, we thank you that you have given to us your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who rescues us from all our sins, all our struggles, and brings us to life everlasting in you. We thank you for those that you have sent into our lives that know this truth and stand firm in it, and that share that truth with us when we hurt, when we're down, when we're in despair. We thank you for them and ask that you bless them. We ask that you bless your children here, Lord, that they may be strengthened by this truth, that they may go forth in your love, strengthened and encouraged to you, that they may see, that they may know you, and that they may share that love. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to pray to you. And so as I go silent for a time, we pray that you send your Holy Spirit upon all these, your children, who pray to you all the time. And as you lead forth, Lord, move them to pray to you this day. Lord, we give to you all those who are sick or hurt in any way. We pray that you put your hand upon them, that you restore them to health as you see fit. Give them the grace to accept this tribulation, the courage and hope in you. Father, whatever else is on our heart, we thank you that we can come to you and cry out to you as you have taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until with all your saints we inherit eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we see this blessing from our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Throw look upon you a favor and give you his peace. Amen. Brody, can we go to Reckless Love? So we join together to sing our closing song.
Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here, friends. Go ahead and have a seat. A couple quick announcements for you. Um, our Sunday school party kickoff is today downstairs. We'd love to have you uh, join us for that, kids. Um, also, we have our Bible study up here for our adults. Um, Clinton, you can work your way up here. September 25th, we have our Bible presentation as we do every year for our kindergartners and our third graders. And then we'll let Quentin go. Hi, Quentin. Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to invite everybody to um, our, our, our mission team's presentation between services next Sunday uh, in the fellowship hall. And um, we'll, it's kind of hard to put into words sometimes uh, the experiences we have while we're there. We're going to give that a little bit of a shot next week. And uh, please come with your questions. I, I just received a word yesterday from Pastor Luis. They had a, a children's celebration day yesterday. They had 62 children participate. And uh, he wrote to me that he says that's only possible because of the uh, interaction that we've had as a church with his church. And uh, he, he wanted me to tell you that he thanks the Lord for our involvement in his ministry every day. And, you know, we've, we've got, the, God's given us the privilege to be involved in that ministry also and be a part of growing God's kingdom in Sikidus. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Thanks, Quentin. Also, I want to just say thank you to everybody for making it possible to welcome back our college students who we love so much. And Monica put together a little video. Thank you. Over 90 students were able to come and be part of that, um, and it was uh, just a truly um, amazing uh, day. So thank you for your uh, help and support of the campus. That all leads to we got to keep praying um, as we go into this new week of 30 days of prayer in your prayer book. Those are still available out there if you'd like to pick one up. We're going to be praying for campuses near and far um, and how we can continue, especially in this one that's near, how we can continue to be a light to them to shine amidst the darkness. That's it, friends. Thank you to our servants up top and down below for sharing your gifts with us this day. God's richest blessings as you step out in faith. The Halverson men will let you out. <laughs>